Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. We're celebrating St. Patrick's Day with a special two-part story called The Druid's Harp of Ireland, an adaptation of an Irish myth written for you by Daniel Hines. Today's episode is part one. Tune in soon for part two. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Druid's Harp of Ireland, part one. Once upon a time, when Ireland was first feeling the touch of human hands, there was a terrible battle on an icy beach. On one side were the people of Ireland, the brave humans that had a drop of fairy blood and had first settled the Emerald Isle. On the other side were the Fomorians, a race of hideous monsters. They lived on a rocky island near Ireland's coast, and they would swim the ocean and raid the shores, stealing crops and cows from the humans and burning down their homes. At first, the attacks had been rare, but as Ireland grew richer, the raids came more and more often. Day and night, the fighting surged like the endless tide. The sun's first rays crested the rocky shoreline and swept west to glint and gleam off swords and axes. Starlight reflected bright on polished shields and dented helms. Shouts and grunts and cries filled the air, and the gulls cawed endlessly in response. You couldn't take a breath without choking on the smells of dust and sweat and war. Yes, it was a terrible battle. And it was there, on the shores of Ireland's northern coast, that the heroes held strong against the monsters. The humans grouped in a line by the water's edge. Those in front had tall shields, those behind, longswords and spears. Their battleground was a rainy beach. Its amber sand was littered with broken stones and shattered shields. The ocean hissed as it broke upon the shore, and every wave seemed to carry more Fomorian monsters with it. The creatures grouped together, yelling to one another in their strange, gargling voices. From a squat stone tower on the battle's edge, the human leaders looked on. There were two of them, the warrior Lu and the druid Dagda. Ancient Irish druids were a mix of magic and song, and Dagda was the best of them. So even though he stood on a squat stone tower at the battle's edge, when he spoke, his mighty voice soared through the hard-driven rain like an arrow. Here they come. Stand solid now. Roots of stone before the plow, he cried. A second later, the Fomorians charged, a hideous and wild stampede. Watch the barbs and watch the claws, wear the fangs and crushing jaws. The humans raised their shields and the Fomorians crashed into them, driving them back. The warriors cursed and struggled, boots slipping on the rainy shore. The monsters loved the rain. It was no wonder why, as they looked more eel than human. They stood on two legs, but were long and slippery and fish-faced, with spindly limbs and grasping arms. Bad as they looked, they smelled even worse, and the Irish holding their shields retreated one step and another, backing away from the sea. Sensing weakness, the monsters hissed and scratched and bit their teeth and claws screaming against the shields of oak and iron. We're losing this battle, said Lu, the great warrior prince. He stood next to Dagda on the command tower and held a glistening spear. The spear was magic and always returned to Lu's hand when called. He gripped it anxiously now, clenching so hard his knuckles were pale white moons. These monsters are endless. The old druid nodded. The monsters were like evil spirits. Strike one down and another stumbled, snarling from the sea. They truly seemed countless, and their numbers were driving the Irish warriors back. The troops just need a little help to beat these beasts back to the kelp, Dagda said, picking up his harp. It was a beautiful instrument made of Irish oak with strings of silver and gold. Do you always have to rhyme? Lou asked. It keeps me in good practice. It annoys me. That's just a fringe benefit. Lou shook his head and then eyed the harp and scoffed. And how are you going to help with that anyway? You're going to play them a song? Aye, a song, 
said Dagda. They're tired, and more, they're running out of hope. Can't you see it in their faces? Can't you read it written in the lines of their eyes? Below, the humans struggled against the Fomorian monsters. For every beast they knocked back into the waves, another washed ashore to take its place. Lou looked down and grunted. Ever the poet. All I see is hard-pressed fighters. They need your spear, not your songs. What could I do with a spear? Slay one foe? With a song, I can touch a thousand hearts. If the monsters have hearts, you better believe my spear will touch them, Lou replied bitterly. That's the problem, Boyo. Your spear limits your thinking. How do you mean? Dagda touched a string and listened to its quiet note. A song can do many things for a person. A song can be quiet or steady or loud, played for a lover or played for a crowd. Whatever the company, whatever their cheer, lend them some music, they'll lend you an ear. A friendly hand pulling you back from the hearse Soon you'll be laughing, a grin on your face Sometimes a good melody is better than grace A song can enchant and compel you to dance And move you to making a maudlin romance No thought to the wind or concern for your head in Next time you hear it, you'll dance at your wedding you a weapon for friends that you knew and though your heart aches and moves you to tears you'll find yourself humming it all through your ears a song heard in passing like early spring rain will sing through your mind in an endless refrain all through the war and the passion and pain when you lay by your fire you'll sing it again A song can do a great many things, and a spear can only kill. So killing's all you think to do. Lou looked down, expression dark. Maybe so, but I am afraid the spear is all I know how to play. He stepped forward, one foot on the tower's edge. Dagda nodded once. May your strength be sure. May your song be sweet, Lou replied, and then he leapt from the tower. He threw his spear as he fell. The magic weapon flew through the monster's ranks, only stopping when Lou hit the ground and gave a shout. At his command, the spear turned and flew back, slapping into his hand. To me monsters, he bellowed. Today you learn to fear the people of Ireland. Above, Dagda smiled and strummed his harp. It was a simple tune, but Dagda was the greatest player to ever live and he had enchanted the instrument himself. At his touch, the music rang out across the battlefield. It turned to a march, sounding of war drums and pipers. Immediately, the Irish felt their exhaustion bleed away, replaced by a newfound strength. As one, they pushed against the snarling mass with their shields and the monsters stumbled back. Dagda's music flowed through them and they gave a mighty roar, and now it was the creatures who were retreating. Forward, men, cried Lou, the warrior prince. Give these beasts back to the salt. He charged forward, his magic spear flying through the monstrous Fomorians and then back to his hand after every throw. Behind him charged a thousand Irish warriors, armed with spears and long swords of bronze and iron. The weapons flashed in the rain, every swing sending tails of salty water spraying through the air. Satisfied, Dagda sat down his harp and picked up his blackthorn club. 
The club, too, was magic, and with it he could heal the injured. A song still on his lips, he leapt from the tower to the sands below, charging forward to help his warriors. Magic as he was, even Dagda couldn't see everywhere at once, which is why he didn't see the Fomorians sneaking up from the back of the tower. They had slipped through the battle in the rain and confusion and waited for the druid to leave. Once Dagda had left, they broke the lock and crept into the tower. They had hoped to find Lu's mighty spear, but he had taken it with him. Instead, they had to settle for Dagda's harp. They tumbled the instrument into a net of seaweed and carried it back with them into the icy waters. And they didn't know it then, but that theft would prove to be their downfall. To be continued. Thanks for listening.